One more time, Stick and Cerny Productions takes us back to the days of yesterday, yesteryear, and gives us a look at West Newton, Pennsylvania, to see what was happening there then. <clears throat> this is the first real map of West Newton that we find, and there's a reason for that. This is the 1850s, and what you see is a railroad going through there. The railroad was probably the big factor that started things going in West Newton. The uh, railroad came through from down in Connellsville in about 1855, and the uh, Railroad only came as far as West Newton. And then for the rest of the 50s, it, they, they worked on building it on into, the, into Pittsburgh. So by around 1860, you had a railroad going through West Newton where you could go down toward Connellsville and connect with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad and then go into Pittsburgh and places west. Also of note is the fact that as early as 1855, there was a photographer in West Newton, which is a significant fact because photography was only invented in Europe in 1839. And to say that it had a photographer in West Newton in 1855 means things were moving. This is 1867, giving you a picture of development. This shows the 1870s, 1876, looking at, there's a cemetery over here on the other side of the river. Also, things over here were developing too, but it wasn't in the town itself until the 1940s. Now, this is West Newton in 1901. You can see things have progressed, not just over here where the town started, but over here, there is, is development. And by 1901, there was also a railroad on this side, too. It was the uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad. Next, we're going to see the bridge. Because at first, it was not just the kind of open bridge that's there now. There was a covered bridge. And that was what it looked like when you would come to go through it. Looks like a two-lane affair. Now that's what's there today. You see the uh, Parker trusses. That's been there since 1908. That was what it looked like when it was dedicated. July 4th, 1908. Three Parker trusses and Ashler stone abutments and piers. And that was the day that the bridge was dedicated, July 4th, 08. We're seeing, once again, the 1901 image, and we're going to go down here and look at something in this corner. At the very end of town, there was down there a factory that made stoves. This was the factory itself showing how it looked from a map, map maker's point of view. This was the company in Pittsburgh, Bartlett, that was marketing the stoves. Eagle Triumph ranges, estate gas ranges, fortune gas ranges. That's the kind of thing they were making. I can't help looking at that without thinking of an old stove that was in my grandmother O'Hara's kitchen when I was just a little boy. This takes us over on Main Street. This is, I won't say one of the really early houses. It wasn't built until 1873. It was built by George Plummer. The Plummers were old people. They had been the early settlers around town. George Plummer had a, a tannery 
in town, a place where leather was made. This is an old, an old cut of that very building. The guy that didn't, he didn't get the street angle very well, but the rest of the house is pretty much in shape. You can see previously it didn't have that garage fastened on the side because there weren't any automobiles then. Right here in town. This gives you a pic. This is the house showing mapping. Main Street going down to the river here. That was George Plummer. The Plummers were important people in the town. The original George Plummer Probably this guy's grandfather was a member of the state legislature and the United States Congress also. That was an early doctor in the town, J.Q. Robinson, very serious looking guy. Now we get to see some of the senior citizens of the built environment. This is on the corner of Water Street and Vine. This is also on Vine. And I sometimes wish houses could talk about, could tell stories about the things that happened there. Were they people who lived there, people were probably born and died there and lived lives. This is on Water Street, another one of those houses I look at and I wish it could tell stories about things that happened there. Also on Water Street, this is the town's library. This is an old house. You can just tell by the configuration of it. It once had a porch on the front and going around this far side. That shows you from overhead. That's, that's the library there. It shows how it fits in. That is one of the town's early you notice it was an octagonal kind of structure, and it was built about 1820. One of the early teachers there was Edgar Cowan. Edgar, as a young fellow, taught school, but he eventually became a lawyer, and he moved to Greensburg and became a senator. He became a member of the United States Senate. This is one of the old town buildings. It was the municipal building. That was one of the old garages. That's a neat photo. I like that. When you look at this, what you see is this vehicle, what we usually call a tow truck, was made out of a car. Some of the old cars were pretty beefy creatures. They had engines in that would put, put to shame some of the little dinky engines in today's car. Back in the 30s, they were making not just V8s, but V12s and V16s. This is Main Street. If you look at the vintage of the cars, you can see it's most likely the 50s. This takes us to present day. Looking down Main Street with the B&O tracks going by. This is also a Main Street, nice big old stone structure. Good solid looking building, good place for a bank. And Porky tells us that that's all folks. This is the third and final one on West Newton. And we'll see you again. And thanks for coming along for the trip. So long now.